Hey, what's up guys and welcome to another RL Craft video. In this video, I will be talking about the top 30 enchantments that you should be looking for in your RL Craft 2.9 playthroughs. Enchantments can make or break your playthrough and are not very difficult to obtain compared to other methods of getting stronger in RL Craft. I will not be talking about how to get enchantments thoroughly in this video, but I will mention right now briefly that you get enchantments from trading with librarian villagers, from structures both safe and unsafe, from a bookworm farm if you don't mind random chaos, and from enchantment resetting at an enchantment table, then placing the enchantment item into a disenchantment table alongside a book where your enchantment will go. Some of these methods are better than others, but I would say librarian trading is the safest, the cheapest, and overall the easiest. You can make a villager farm if you really want to, but you find villagers in a lot of structures in the world, so an adventurous player will have no small amount of villagers to trade with. With that out of the way, let's go. First, a quick disclaimer. These enchantments were rated by myself on how important I consider them to be for the average RLCraft playthrough, and if I find enchantments have the same impact and do nearly the same thing, I'll place them together in the same number slot. I will explain what enchantments do and why I like them though regardless. Now, let's get into the video. First, the honorable mentions. Advanced Thorns can help you as enemies that attack you will take damage for doing so, but your armor will take damage in the process. In the Lost Cities Dimension and against final bosses, armor durability can be very important, and a set of silver armor that grants you immunity to all debuffs is rather frail, so I usually do not recommend putting any kind of thorns on your armor. However, this enchantment is wonderful for just about any other content in the game as long as you have a means of repairing your armor or have like mending on it. Lastly, for the honorable mentions, I will talk about some conditional enchantments as I like to call them. Water Aspect, when fighting Blazes, Endermen, Magma Cubes, and when fighting Underwater, is about as good as Advanced Sharpness. This enchantment does not stack with sharpness of any kind, but if you have no other choice, for the mid-game, you can make a Water Aspect weapon and fight Underwater in Dungeons. The other enchantments, Dark Shadows, Lunar's Blessing, Clear Sky's Favor, Winter's Grace, Thunderstorm's Bestowment, Soul's Blessing, and Rain's Bestowment all work in their desirable conditions, and most of these enchantments actually stack with most of the other meta ones. The problem is they only work when you are outdoors, and the damage they add, even in their best conditions, is very low, and they take away a little damage when you are not in their ideal situation. Anything that adds damage to a weapon can be nice, but I didn't think these conditional enchantments deserved a spot in the top 30. Now, let's jump into our list. Number 30. Disarmament, Desolator, and Reinforced Sharpness. These enchantments all improve your axe's damage. Having an axe is a viable resource, and disarmament is great in PvP and PvE alike against certain enemies as it will give you a chance to apply severe weakness to an enemy, and this makes them do basically no damage to you. Or you will disarm their weapon, which, like I said, can be nice in PvP, as axes are already used to help break through shields anyways. Desolator also is nice, as it will take away resistance that an enemy has, allowing you to do more damage, or it will do extra damage damage if the opponent has resistances active. Desolator is also great in PvP for that reason, as many players will have resistances in high stakes PvP. Sometimes you will only be able to get one attack in, so a hard hitting axe attack can be a great play. Most melee weapons usually do more damage on the second swing or after prolonged attacks on a player, so when you can only get one attack in, you can just use an axe. Lastly, reinforced sharpness is like sharpness for tools and will allow your axe to deal much more damage, slightly more than advanced sharpness would if you could put advanced sharpness on an axe. Number 29. Empowered Defense. This enchantment used to be insane when it went up to 4 instead of 2, but it is still very useful and when stuck in a bad situation, blocking with your shield to passively defeat some of the weaker enemies attacking you can save your life. This enchantment also grants the shield a chance to not let the shield get disabled when attacked so you can block longer and enemies that attack your shield get knocked back further when doing so. I recommend this shield for anyone who wants to use a shield in their endgame build. Number 28. Supreme Smite and Supreme Bane of the Arthropods. These enchantments add about twice as much damage as Supreme Sharpness against the enemies they are strong against. In other words, if your sword does 30 damage as a base, and with Supreme Sharpness it will do 50 damage, adding 20 damage, Supreme Smite will make you do 70 damage against undead enemies, adding 40. 
You will, however, do 30 damage, adding 0 damage to all non-undead enemies. Bane of the Arthropods works the same way, except against Arthropod enemies. These enchantments are incredibly strong for their specific task, and they stack with all other enchantments besides sharpness. For a Malgalich XP farming, you can use Supreme Smite, for example, and Supreme Bane of the Arthropods can be used for clearing Marmix dens. Supreme Sharpness is still better overall since it increases damage against everything, but these enchantments have their uses. Number 27. Tunneling, Versatility, Efficiency, and Smelter and Smelting. These enchantments all do the same thing for your pickaxe, making it better but not broken. Tunneling makes you break multiple blocks when you mine. Versatility will let a pickaxe mine every block faster, and that includes like dirt and wood, which pickaxes normally are bad against. Efficiency and advanced efficiency make your pickaxe mine faster, but it seems efficiency 5 makes your pickaxe often mine faster than an advanced efficiency 5 pickaxe would due to a bug. And lastly, smelter and smelting lets you get iron ingots from mining iron ore instead of getting the ore that you would need to place into a furnace later for the ingots. This isn't limited to just iron though. Smelter also works with silver, gold, umbrian, and any other ores that you would normally need to smelt for their material. The difference between smelting and smelter is that while they both work on a fortune 3 pickaxe, so you get multiple iron ingots from a single iron ore for example, smelter gives you more from Fortune 3 than Smelting does, so Smelter is better for resources. However, if you crouch while breaking an ore with a Smelter pickaxe, you won't get the Iron Ingots, you will get the Iron Ore. So Smelting, while the Fortune 3 output is not amplified as much as Smelter's is, you can crouch while breaking blocks, so it feels a bit more convenient since in RLCraft you commonly will crouch to pick up drops. Either way, all the above mentioned pickaxe enchantments are convenient, especially Smelter and Smelting, for extra materials when combined with the enchantment. Fortune 3. Number 26. Return, Expanse, Supercharge, Hydrodynamic, Lucky Throw, Propulsion, and Razor's Edge. All of these enchantments are incredibly amazing for a throwing weapon, and without any of them, the weapon would be noticeably worse. Return makes your throwing weapons go right back into your hand, similarly to the loyalty enchantment for tridents in vanilla Minecraft. Expanse increases the throwing weapon's ammo capacity. Hydrodynamic lets the throwing weapon work underwater without slowing down. Supercharge decreases the throwing time needed for a max distance throw, so it is similar to rapid fire for bows. Lucky throw is basically looting for the throwing weapon, which increases good loot chances. Propulsion increases the throwing weapon's speed and range when thrown. And lastly, Razor's Edge increases the throwing weapon's damage, similar to sharpness for a melee weapon. All of these enchantments are what are needed to make throwing weapons be able to compete and sometimes be better than bows and crossbows, especially for single target. Number 25. Spread Shot, Rapid Load, and Sharpshooter 3. Not to be confused with the other sharpshooter enchantment for that crappy Defile Lands gun that does like 10 damage and nobody uses. These three enchantments are all for the crossbow. Spread shot turns your singular crossbow shot into three shots in a small fan in front of you, and this is great against multiple enemies. Rapid load makes you load your crossbow faster, increasing your DPS similarly to rapid fire for bows, and sharpshooter makes your crossbow bolts fire much faster, making you feel like you are using a hitscan weapon in an FP. Yes, I find the crossbow a bit better than the throwing weapon considering its AoE capabilities and its fast projectiles, so I place these three enchantments slightly above at number 25. Number 24. Rune Piercing Capabilities and Rune Arrow Piercing these enchantments are very standard as they let you ignore the armor an opponent is wearing. Think of this enchantment allowing you to do the same amount of damage you do to a pig that has zero armor to a dragon that has a lot of armor. Room piercing capabilities is always nice to have, but it is by no means game breaking. And no, this enchantment does not work with a rapier or saber in 2.9 RL craft, unfortunately. The damage registers as though the enemy has no armor, but the game still recognizes that the enemy is wearing armor. Rune arrow piercing does the same thing, but with bows, which is just as useful. Number 23. Diamonds everywhere, fortune, and silk touch. 
Diamonds everywhere, Fortune, and Silk Touch cannot be ran together, but each of these three enchantments can grant the player amazing utility. Fortune 3 will grant the player much more drops from Diamond Ore, Emerald Ore, Lapis Lazuli, Redstone, Quartz, and the like. And if you combine Fortune with Smelter, or Smelting, that I mentioned earlier, you now get extra Iron, Gold, Silver, and Umbrian from the correlating ores that you mine. Mining usually isn't my first recommendation in RLCraft, but with a Fortune and Smelting pickaxe, it is certainly a lot more productive. As for diamonds everywhere, you now can obtain diamonds from coal, lapis, redstone, quartz, and emerald ore veins with a low percentage chance. I like this enchantment a lot for when I find all those massive coal veins underground, but besides that, a fortune pickaxe is usually the way to go. Next up, silk touch allows you to mine blocks without breaking them, and the best use for this in my opinion is when using an ender chest. You can keep your shulker boxes in your ender chests, and now you're running around with enough inventory space to completely clear out dozens of structures and dungeons of their valuables. Also, I know this is a bit off topic, but placing shulker boxes in all your soulbound pets inventory is also smart. Anyways, having three different pickaxes, each with one of these three enchantments, can be almost a necessity on an extended adventure, especially a fortune pickaxe for mining the emerald veins in an underground dragon den. Number 22. Subject PE, Subject Science, and Subject English. All of these grant the player the same amount of damage added onto your weapon, but each also have a minor passive ability. Subject PE grants the player beneficial potion buffs with a percent chance whenever you attack something. In a maxed out food, potions, and wine build in the endgame though, the regeneration 4 buff that Subject PE gives you can remove your permanent regeneration 3 buff from your battle burrito or mossy pie. So if you choose the enchantment Subject PE and still want to have a permanent regeneration buff, you should try to get the regeneration 4 buff with subject PE and then drink wine to extend the regeneration 4 effects duration. If you do this, subject PE is the best of the three enchantments by far. Subject English gives the player extra damage against smarter mobs like villagers and iron golems, which isn't insane, but it is very straightforward and easy to work with. And lastly, Subject Science gives you a chance for all of your attacks to explode, dealing extra damage to enemies when you attack. In general, Subject Science gives you the most damage in an endgame maxed out buff setup, but with Subject PE's Regeneration 4, it is hard for me not to recommend it. Either way, all three of these subject enchantments are in the same tier of amazing. They do not stack though, so you can only choose one. Number 21. Underwater Strider and Agility. Agility is an enchantment for your pants, and it lets your character move faster in general by a small amount, which is very convenient. An underwater strider lets your player move much faster while submerged in water. Underwater strider is incredibly powerful, and it is an essential enchantment to go for in RLCraft, as it is necessary in order to move incredibly fast in the water. On its own, the enchantment is not too insane, but when paired with the Stone of the Sea Bobble, an explorer's risotto food, Neptunian armor, which gives you a speed boost in water, and a stone of greater inertia, well, let's just say your computer might not like it. I don't recommend combining more than two to three of these things max though, so you can actually control yourself in the water. Number 20. Upgraded Potentials. I was debating putting this enchantment on this list, as it is possible to never need this enchantment, but I decided to include it anyways, as it can save any player some levels when enchanting. Whenever you place upgraded potentials on an enchanted item, the cost of enchanting gets reset back to default, as long as XP cost for a single enchantment did not exceed 128 levels. To not have to use upgraded potentials, you should enchant your weapon with a 24816 method, or exponential enchanting method. Without making things too complicated, putting on multiple enchantments at a time, such as a single combined enchantment book having four enchantments on it, will be cheaper than enchanting your item one enchantment at a time, as every time you enchant a weapon, the next enchantment will cost more. You can just combine a lot of books together and put on times four enchanted books on your item, and that is honestly very fine and the XP cost will be affordable. But if you want to save as many levels as possible, the 24816 or more easy to use use 2468 method is cheaper. If that doesn't make sense, it is okay, just look for upgraded potentials and put the enchanted book on when enchanting says too expensive. You can still enchant an item in RLCraft when it says too expensive, it will just cost more than 40 levels, but after doing that once or twice, you should add on upgraded potentials. Either way, this enchantment book saves you a lot of levels if you choose to use it, and XP in RLCraft is so very valuable, making this enchantment rather strong. Number 19. 
Ash Destroyer, and Reviled Blade. For the highest DPS with a Spartan Weaponry weapon, you want to use a Fire Dragonbone weapon alongside the enchantment Ash Destroyer 5. And for the second highest melee weapon damage for a Spartan Weaponry weapon, you want to go for an Ice Dragonbone weapon with Reviled Blade. Ash Destroyer stacks with all enchantments in the current melee weapon meta besides Luck Magnification 2 and Supreme Fire Aspect, and these two enchantments do not contribute much to your DPS anyways. Ash Destroyer makes your weapon do nearly double weapon damage against enemies on fire, and this scales proportionately with your enchantments. Envenomed, Viper, a Poison Stone Bobble, Supreme Sharpness, and all that good stuff will end up doing double damage as long as the enemy is on fire. The downside is since this enchantment does not stack with any sort of fire application, it is only meta-defining on a fire dragonbone weapon that sets enemies on fire for you. Reviled Blade can add just as much DPS to your weapon as Ash Destroyer does as long as the enemy is under 25% HP. Reviled Blade does work against any enemy, while Ash Destroyer only works against enemies on fire, but both of the weapons I would place in the same tier. Reviled Blade also does more damage after the first hit now that enemies won't be full HP, and Ash Destroyer uses the first hit to set the enemy on fire, and then the second hit gets the extra damage. If you want to use a Spartan Weaponry melee weapon, I highly advise you going for Reviled Blade for Ice Dragonbone weapons or Ash Destroyer for Fire Dragonbone weapons. These two enchantments are the only reason Spartan Weaponry can compete with the Sentient Scythe and the Nunchucks, which I will talk about as I continue down the list of best enchantments. Number 18, Infinity. This enchantment lets bows and crossbows shoot forever without consuming ammo. It only works with normal arrows and bolts, but you don't even need to have one arrow or bolt on you like you would in vanilla Minecraft. This enchantment is a must for any DPS bow or crossbow when you do not have an excess of arrows or bolts lying around. Number 17. Advanced Power, Rapid Fire, Strafe, and Pull Speed. All of these enchantments make bows do considerably more DPS, so I put them together. Advanced Power increases the raw damage of your bow by a lot, and Rapid Fire and Strafe for a bow, and Pull Speed for a switch bow increase the speed at which you can fire your bow at full charge. Strafe and Rapid Fire stack, and Strafe and Pull Speed stack. But pull speed cannot be placed on a regular bow, so you can only combine all three of these insane bow enchantments on a switch bow. And while yes, you can't stack infinity with strafe, you can't place infinity on a switch bow anyways, so that doesn't matter. And it will also double as a convenient tool that can do some creative arrow combos when you place Multishot 4 on the bow. I recommend putting Strafe and Pull Speed on your Switch Bow, and while Strafe does not stack with Advanced Punch or Pushing, you do not need those enchantments anyways. Spoilers, they are not even on this list. Regardless though, making your bow fire faster is incredibly useful. If you max your pulling speed in your L menu though, then your bow will sadly fire too fast and the damage will not register for max damage on most enemies. The damage does, however, work on dragons. And I have found that a switch bow with pull speed, strafe 4, triple arrows, and max draw speed in your L menu is by far the fastest way in all of our Railcraft of downing a dragon that is flying in the sky while you are on the ground. It is nearly instant as dragons have no immortality frame so all the arrows register instantly bringing the beast down fast. Poor dragons. Number 16. Arc Slash. Arc Slash makes all your attacks do damage not only to the single target you're attacking but also to all the enemies close by to that mob. This enchantment only works consistently with a full damage swing on your weapon, so you can't just spam left click and expect it to trigger over and over. But my goodness, this enchantment is so amazing for dungeons as you will be overwhelmed by enemies very often. Arc Slash is one of my personal favorite enchantments to always look out for. Number 15. Swifter Slashes. This enchantment used to go up to Swifter Slashes 5, but even when only going up to 3, this enchantment makes melee weapons swing much faster, and when combined with a pair of nunchucks, or even just an enchantment like Arc Slash, which allows the enchantment to truly shine, Swifter Slashes really comes in handy. Not only this, but the DPS increase this weapon gives the player is so strong that without this enchantment, there are only a few scenarios where your weapon will be meta-defining. Withers are one such example, since the Withers have long and vulnerability windows between when they can be damaged in a Railcraft 2.9, but other than that, Swifter Slashes is super amazing. Number 14 purification. This enchantment purifies certain enemies with a slight chance. On paper, this really does not seem too powerful, but this enchantment can be used to instantly turn zombie villagers into normal villagers. 
trapping and curing white-shirted villagers when you find them in certain scenarios, or just curing and zombifying white-shirted villagers over and over again in hopes of getting stronger and stronger librarians is the way to go if you have the patience. When you purify a zombie villager, the villager will have a random profession, so if you purify a green-shirted zombie villager, it could still turn into a librarian with a bit of luck. You also can purify zombie pigment into regular pigs and magma cubes into regular slimes if you want. But remember, there is only a low chance of this working, it is not guaranteed. This enchantment stacks with every useful enchantment for a max endgame weapon though, besides Envenomed unfortunately. I would say Viper is much more important, and Viper does stack with Purification. The last neat thing you can do with this is if you do purify a villager and it's not a librarian, you can just let a zombie attack and return that villager into a zombie and then try your luck again. Odds are you'll probably just end up killing them as purification is a low chance, but it is worth a shot. Number 13. Advanced Looting and Luck Magnification Advanced looting significantly increases your chances of getting rare drops from enemies and allows you to get much more of the common drops from enemies you defeat. Instead of one stake from cows, you can now get a handful of steak, for example. Luck magnification grants you the effect luck too when holding the weapon. Normally, the effect luck will increase your chances of better loot from vanilla loot pools, shipwrecks being an example of such a structure. In RLCraft, this wouldn't be very useful, but in the words of Shavaxi, the mod author of RLCraft himself, the luck effect works on chests and loot pools that have been set properly in RLCraft. Two examples he gave me are of course the vanilla structures but also the Lost City's dimension. This makes luck magnification wonderful for the late endgame but kinda meh for everything else. These enchantments do stack, and advanced looting stacks with just about every other melee weapon enchantment. Luck Magnification on the other hand does not stack with Ash Destroyer, Reviled Blade, or Blessed Edge, which I will talk about in the Lifesteal section. Number 12. Curse of Possession not everyone would agree with this ranking, as any weapon or item enchanted with Curse of Possession will disappear if you die, so you can never get it back. But this enchantment on like Hardcore, or on a maxed out character that won't die, is pretty much a necessity. Curse of Possession will make an item unable to leave your inventory unless you manually place the item in a chest or container yourself. This means enemies with the sticky effect, which unequip your weapon, will be unable to do that. In a large fight against dozens of enemies or in an area in general with a lot of drops on the ground, if your weapon gets disarmed and unequipped, you are in a very bad spot. Sometimes your weapon can even disappear when dropped or even a mob could pick it up and despawn. Losing your max out weapon you spent hours on to a dumb zombie with sticky that spawned right behind you when you're already fighting 50 plus enemies in a mega battle tower is one of the most BS and annoying things in RLCraft, and Curse of Possession solves all of those problems. You will never need to worry about your item ever getting disarmed again with this enchantment on it. Number 11. Combo, Fiery Edge, and Atomic Deconstructor. Combo is an enchantment for nunchucks that makes your weapon do insane damage as long as you're holding left click and using the nunchucks non-stop twirling attack animation. Fiery Edge makes your melee weapon set enemies on fire when attacking, but more importantly it will give you a chance to ignore a mob's invulnerability windows, allowing you to deal damage more often rather than waiting that fraction of a second before damage can register again. This doesn't work on bosses like the Wither, the Ender Dragon, Rahalvard, Asmodeus, and Amalgalich, but it works against just about every Everything else. And because of this, Numchugs actually have the most DPS in the game for single target against smaller enemies. And yes, this does mean max Numchugs have the most DPS as a melee weapon in PvP even more than the Sentient Scythe, since Fiery Edge can ignore a player's immortality window. Lastly, Atomic Deconstructor gives your weapon a minuscule chance of instantly killing an enemy, and when combined with Nunchuck's stupidly fast attack speed and being able to ignore invulnerability frames with Fiery Edge, Atomic Deconstructor is even more useful. Needless to say, Fiery Edge and Atomic Deconstructor also work on other weapons besides Nunchucks, but other weapons in the game do not attack fast enough to take advantage of Fiery Edge's ability with a full damage attack besides like the Katana, Rapier, and Dagger, and those weapons have very low base damage overall. If you do choose to use any of these three weapons, you should use the Fire Dragonbone weapon version and place Fiery Edge on the weapon, but Ash Destroyer would still give you more DPS than Fiery Edge here, and Ash Destroyer does not stack with Fiery Edge. 
Needless to say, you need to put Swifter Slashes 3 on all these weapons, nunchucks included, to better utilize these enchantments, and combo only works on nunchucks. Number 10, Envenomed and Viper. Another stupidly strong combinations of enchantments are Envenomed and Viper. Envenom makes your weapon inflict poison and wither to enemies you hit with your weapon, and Viper makes your weapon do a lot more damage against enemies affected by poison and or wither. When paired with the Poison Stone Bobble, that makes you do 50% more damage to poison enemies, this combination is even stronger. This damage is so good that it dwarfs the Mortalitas damage route alternative, and if you didn't know, Mortalitas makes your weapon do more damage for every enemy you've slain with the weapon, up to about 200 enemies slain or so, but the damage you gain is so minor compared to the damage you gain via Envenomed Viper and the Poison Stone Bobble. And no, Mortalitas does not work with Envenomed and Viper. Number 9. Multi-Shot 4. This enchantment allows your bow to fire 4 additional shots alongside your first shot. Now your bow fires 5 arrows instead of just 1. This enchantment also has a fun interaction with a switch bow that allows you to fire 1 of the selected arrows and 4 of the arrows highest in your inventory. You can get insanely creative with this via modded arrows, but you can also use modded arrows with multi shot 4 with a normal bow. Pull speed stacking with strafe on a switch bow is what carries the DPS, but normal bows can work just as well and can also have infinity on as a back. Up. Either way, Multi Shot 4 is incredible, and this is an enchantment that I'm always actively looking for if I don't have it already. Number 8 Education and Adept. Education 3 and Adept 3 both grant the player about double XP from defeating enemies. From testing, for the same amount of damage done to the same enemies, Adept 3 gave me about 90% more XP, and Education 3 gave me about 96% more XP. Keep in mind, both of these enchantments gives you less XP against blighted enemies. Education is better than Adept though, not only as it gave me more XP from recent tests in 2.9 RL craft compared to Adept, but Adept does not stack with advanced looting, while Education does stack. Needless to say, getting double XP from fighting is so amazing, and these enchantments are a massive time saver if you can get them, and I am always recommending this enchantment. Number 7. Lifesteal, Vampirism, and Blessed Edge. Lifesteal grants the player an effect that lets you gain hearts back when hitting enemies for a small amount, and it also grants you some extra damage to your weapon. Vampirism also gives you hearts back when attacking enemies, but it doesn't give your weapon additional damage like Lifesteal does. You can, however, stack these enchantments together to amplify your self-healing ability. Blessed Edge, like Lifesteal and Vampirism, also gives you hearts back, and from testing, Blessed Edge 5 gives you just as many hearts back as Lifesteal 2 does, which on its own makes the enchantment incredible. Blessed Edge 5 also gives you a significant damage increase against undead enemies, and this bonus is about twice as strong as the damage Lifesteal 2 gives your weapon. A strike against Blessed Edge, though, is that it doesn't stack with Supreme Sharpness, Lifesteal, or Swifter Slashes, but it does stack with Ash Destroy vampirism, envenomed, regular sharpness for some reason, viper, and well, everything else you get the picture. So you can still make an incredibly strong weapon with this enchantment that does more damage than a lifesteal weapon against undead enemies that can be set on fire. That pretty much only means like reapers, geist skeletons, and zombies though. So overall, I would consider lifesteal a stronger enchantment. But if you don't have access to supreme sharpness and don't have lifesteal, blessed edge with regular sharpness is a wonderful alternative, and it can compete with a strong strongest Spartan weapon in the game against the undead susceptible to fire enemies when placed on a fire dragon bone weapon. Also, while this isn't enchantment related, it is on the topic of life draining. The Scarlight Dagger is an extremely easy to make item that grants you a solid lifesteal effect on your attacks. The weapon merely needs a black heart, which you get from the Enderman-like enemies in the Defile Land biome, an Umbrian ingot, and Scarlight, which you can get from a few sources, but mining in the Defiled Lands is the easiest. This weapon has more DPS than a diamond sword thanks to its fast attack speed, and it has incredible durability. The weapon only requires 4 in attack to use as well for some reason. With a Paleo Salad, you heal yourself much faster than merely having lifesteal and vampirism on your weapon. Anyways, this was just a bonus early game RL craft tip I didn't know where to fit. Let's continue on with our list. Number 6. Advanced Mending and Unbreaking these enchantments, as many of you know, help your items not break, which is vital in RLCraft 2.9, especially against hard-hitting enemies that will devastate your armor. Rahovart, Asmodeus, and Adaptive Lost Cities enemies being such examples. Advanced Mending, though, is so amazing, as it repairs your items at an incredible pace as long as you keep getting XP, and with Education doubling the XP you get, you will not be in short supply in the endgame by any means. 
Unbreaking 3 now can go up to Unbreaking 4 with Ancient Tomes. And Unbreaking 3 and Unbreaking 4 are incredible and allow even Silver Armor to not break easily in the Lost City's dimension. These enchantments are a must on your gear in the endgame. Regular Mending works perfectly fine as well by the way, just not as well as Advanced Mending. Number 5. Natural Blocking. This enchantment only goes up to tier 2 now instead of tier 3, but from testing this enchantment makes your shield absorb at least 20% damage that your character takes from all sources. In some scenarios it tanked up to 40% damage, but the shield pretty much never absorbs less than 20%. A passive enchantment that just absorbs damage for your character for free as well as a rapier and saber that absorbs 25% damage that you take is just a wonderful combination. Now that you can put protection and 4 on your shield, shields are even more of a value defensive weapon than before. Natural blocking 2 on a shield is a wonderful enchantment for any player that does not want to get one shot by things. And I almost always recommend you have a natural blocking 2 shield when you go into the Lost City's Dimension with Silver Armor. Number 4. Supreme Sharpness. This enchantment is the strongest single damage enchantment in the game and requires no prerequisites. In RLCraft 2.8.2 and prior, I would have rated this enchantment as the number one. Now, defense is more important than before though, so it only sits at number four. This enchantment makes your weapon do a lot of increased damage, and while it is nowhere near as overpowered as some other damage sources, it is a single enchantment with no downsides that can be placed on just about any melee weapon and stacks with just about everything. Once a player finds Supreme sharpness they can rejoice as they just obtained a straight net gain for their playthrough. Number 3. Parry and Evasion I cannot stress enough how incredibly powerful these enchantments can be. Parry is a weapon enchantment that grants the player a chance to completely block any attack, and Evasion is an enchantment for your pants that gives you a chance to completely dodge any attack. Natural Blocking 2 reduces incoming damage 100% of the time by 20%, but these enchantments give you a decent chance to avoid 100% of all damage from any given attack, and when stacked together there are moments when you will feel like you are completely invulnerable to all damage. The True Strike enchantment allows players to pierce through the evasion enchantment by 75% in PvP, but in a playthrough these enchantments are literal lifesavers. I would have died so many times against Rahobart if I didn't have these enchantments on my gear. Number 2. Advanced Protection This enchantment when paired with Golem Armor tremendously helps the player reach the 80% passive damage reduction cap that exists in RLCraft. With food buffs, natural blocking, sabers, and rapiers though, you can still hit the damage reduction cap without Golem Armor as long as you have Advanced Protection 4 on your gear. Having max damage reduction in a set of silver armor seems only possible with full advanced protection though. Advanced protection is arguably the strongest enchantment in the game and once a player finally gets a full set of it, they feel finally safe. This enchantment isn't enough on its own to make or break a playthrough, but it helps tremendously and I am always on the lookout for it. Number 1. Strengthened Vitality Strength and Vitality 5 will grant the player a massive amount of hearts, and the amount of hearts added is determined by your character's overall hearts. In other words, the more hearts you have, the more hearts this enchantment will give your character, and this adjusts mid-combat if you drink like a potion of health boost, for example. Once you reach the max damage reduction cap in RLCraft 2.9, you will notice that bosses like Rahovart, Asmodeus, Amalgalich, and many Lost Cities enemies still hit like absolute freight trains, and that is because 80% damage reduction still means enemies are hitting you for 20% of their base damage, which is still incredibly high. Because of that, having more hearts is so important. It is hard to avoid all damage you take, but with Strength of Vitality 5, you can take a lot more damage than you previously could, and it is my personal favorite enchantment to find in all of RLCraft 2.9. Hey guys, I really hope you enjoyed that video. I am sure some of the enchantments or ranking surprise some of you, but again, keep in mind this was my own list made from my own testing and experience. Regardless, I hope you got something from this video and I will catch you all next time. Have a wonderful day gamers, take care of yourselves, and thanks for watching. Bye bye